today, I decided to give myself a treat uh, and to give NBCC a treat because the man who is the closest father figure that I have on the planet, Bishop Donald Green, I asked him to come and speak to us today. Can we just celebrate that? Uh, 30 years, I counted up, I didn't realize it was this long, 30 years ago, uh, I walked into his office to do a little interview, and I was so nervous I had on mismatched shoes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess the Lord just spoke to his heart, and he just took me under his wings. And from there to now, he has poured into me uh, so much. And I've said this before, and it's absolutely true. Uh, I would not be on this stage as the pastor of New Beginnings if it wasn't for Bishop Donald Green. Yeah. And so this is my dad here, guys. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, and so I am just delighted to introduce to some and present to all of you my dad in the ministry. And really, the bishop for all of us, Bishop Donald Green. Thanks, man. Thank you, man. Yeah. I would feel much better if we give the Lord a real hand clap because he's the one that's great. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good and he is greatly to be praised. And we're certainly glad to be here with your pastor and really the father of this house in that sense that we appreciate his ministry and he's been a real blessing to me. And I know that you have enjoyed Pastor Hamilton over the years that he's been here. Let's celebrate your pastor here today. And, and his lovely wife, we appreciate her, the first lady of this church, amen. And I'm certainly glad to have my wife with me here today. We've been married for 63 years this year. 63 years, amen. She's very great. <laughs> My sisters are here and my sister-in-law is here. All of you know Vivian and you should know his, her mother, Jean Williams. She's here as well. Let's get in the word of the Lord here. I just want to take a moment just to say that I'm glad to be here for Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards our life. We can't do this without you. We need you right this very moment. So we pray that you will anoint these lips of clay. For then we know that except you build the house, we labor in vain. Take the words of our lips now and build in the hearts of your people that we might grow from faith to faith and knowledge to knowledge and grace to grace, and love to love. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Why don't we stand for the reading of the scripture here today. Found in the book of John, verses 13, chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. Let's read together. And so I am giving a new commandment to you now. Love each other just as much as I love you. Your strong love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Look at your neighbor for a moment and tell them relationships matter. The 17th century English author, John Donne, in a message stated, in his message he stated, no man is an island. 
No man is an island. No one is self-sufficient. Everyone relies on another. You see, only God is self-sufficient. He does not need anything outside of himself, yet he created us. We were created out of God's love, which makes every one of us an expression of God's love. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor real quickly that you are an expression of God's love. No, he didn't need us, but he loves us. Therefore, he created us so that we might be filled with himself. In the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, verses 24 to 25 in the Living Bible says, He made the world and everything in it. And since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples. And human hands can't minister to his needs. For he has no needs. No, he himself gives life and breath to everything and satisfies every need there is. Lord have mercy. Let me say it again. God is the only one that is self-sufficient. We as human beings, need one another. Relationships are imperative for many different reasons. Our emotional well-being, our stability, good health, and the list goes on. However, broken relationships affects every one of these Over the years of pastoring, I pastored for some 46 years, the same church. And I've watched individuals because of broken relationships and how it had an effect upon their health and their entitled life. Relationships are important. Perhaps your heart has been terribly broken by others. Parents who let you down, friends who disappointed you, lovers who cheated on you, colleagues who deceived you, or maybe thinking, you might be even thinking now, I don't need anyone but God. That's the attitude we get when we've been hurt, where there's pain. When someone else outside of God has hurt us, we say, I don't need anybody. But God, and we will say that even about God when we feel that God hurt us in some way or another. We get a feeling that I don't need God, but we always need God. And we always need one another. Well, the truth is, despite your past pain, you need both God and, and you need others as well. NBC, see, your vision and value statement says that relationships matter. One of the things that I believe you are saying is that you are concerned about the well-being of every person. Regardless of their background, their pedigree, their ethnicity, or their financial status. You want to be connected to them in friendship and fellowship. 
so that you can grow together towards God's purpose for your life. This is why you have 50 small groups meetings across the Bay Area so that each of you can find community, friendship, and real unconditional love. That's so important. That's so important. That's so, can I say it one more time? It's all right, isn't it? That's so important that we find that fellowship, that we find that community, that we realize that we are loved by one another. That's so important. Church, let me say it one more time. Relationships matter. So this morning, let us look briefly at three areas of relationship that matters. One is our relationship with God. Secondly, our relationship with one another. And thirdly, since today is Father's Day, our relationship with fathers and their children. Our relationship with God matters. I want to argue that the only way that a human being can have a personal relationship with God is through Jesus Christ, our Savior. He, he is the one that makes it possible. He is the one that makes it possible. No wonder John 14, 6, and the message reads, Jesus said, I am the road, also the truth, also the life, no one gets to the Father apart from me. He's the only way. Church, I believe that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Now, I don't want you to, I don't want to spend time uh, this morning. It'll take a little time because we could talk about what image and what likeness mean. That would be another sermon. And I'll let your professor hear. Pastor Herman, take care of that. <laughs> He's able to teach at Harvard. He can tell you what that means. But I don't want to spend my time talking about what likeness and image, what it means. But the only thing I will say today, it doesn't mean that God looked like Pastor Herman. No, Pastor, Pastor Tilton, it don't look like that. It was not physical. However, the image was damaged because of Adam's sin, which broke the relationship with God. And for reading the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, we know, especially in the book of Hebrews, we know that God, out of his love and mercy and grace, made some temporary provisions until that that was perfect came along in the person of Jesus Christ. And it is through him that you and I have relationship with God the Father. Look what Romans 8, 5, 8 says in the message. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death while we were no use whatsoever to him. God put his love out there but we was no use to him whatsoever. He still put his love on display for us. Again, relationships matter. Yes, your relationship with God matters. You know, King David found that out. 
you know the story. You hear it all the time about how David did with Bathsheba. But he was hurt. He was sorrowful for what happened. And we see that in, and I'm just reading it here, the New King James Bible. I'm just going to read a couple of verses so you can see, and I'm talking about relationships matters with God. David sensed that, and he said this, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Now, skipping down to verses 10 and 11, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Relationships matter. And David realized that after he did what he did, he said, God, I want to stay related to you. So renew me. Restore me. And aren't you glad that you have a God that don't throw us away when we make mistakes? That he don't give up on us when we make mistakes? But we can come to him and say like David, create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That's the kind of God that we serve. Relationships matters. Relationships matters with God and it also matters with one another. The scripture says here in 1 John 4, 20 to 21 in the message, if anyone boasts, I love God and go right on hating his brother or sister, thinking nothing of it. He is a what? Liar. Lord have mercy. If he won't love the person he can see, how can he love the God he can't see? The command we have from Christ is blunt. Loving God includes loving people. you got to to love both. Wow. 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 So where are we? We take ship matters with God. Now we're talking about a relationship matters with one another. Uh-huh. With each other. Uh-huh. Look what Matthew says about it. Matthew 22, verse 35 to 40. We see how the Pharisees and the Sadducees came together to try to trap Jesus concerning the law by asking him, which commandment in the law was the greatest? And just by a little history, by the way, over the years, these Jewish teachers had set up some 600 commandments. 600 commandments. No person could keep them all. So the question was often asked. It wasn't a new question, it was often asked. Which commandment was the greatest. Wow. But let me just throw this in. It won't cost you nothing. <laughs> all of God, now let's say all of man, all of God's commandments are important. Yeah, 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 yeah. However, they all hinge on these two commandments. Our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. Lord God, with all your heart, this is the first and the greatest command, and your neighbor as yourself. You see, church, the only way I know you love God is by how you love your neighbor. That's right. That's it. Love must be demonstrated. It's an act. Yeah. Something must be done. Love without demonstration is empty. I had a friend of mine who 
was a great preacher. He traveled all in those days. They had what they would call an evangelist. They would just go from one church to another, and one city to another, and all around preaching and what have you. And he was a real busy person. His name was Harold Colbert. Great preacher. He preached all around the country and all around. But whenever he came home, he had a neighbor that was not a Christian. But when he would cut his grass, he would also cut his neighbor's grass. Wow. Wow. That little simple act. Wow. <laughs> he would cut his grass, his lawn, and, one of the, and he would go over and take care of the lawn of his neighbor. My, my, my. His neighbor couldn't understand that. Probably this man is so busy preaching all over the country, all that he knows, all that, and yet he would take care of my grass. Wow. That's what I mean by showing love. He wasn't expecting it in return, no, no. but he wanted to do show love to that individual. Yeah, right. That's why the scripture says to us, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Yeah. In other words, let your deeds be true. Yeah. Yeah. No false motives. other than you love the individual. In Luke 10, in Luke 10, the story is told about, is told, I should say, about the Good Samaritan. And Jesus tells us, tells this story, showing us that relationship matters. Here was a Jewish man traveling in, from Jerusalem to Jericho, which was about 12 miles or so who was attacked by robbers and stripped of his clothing, leaving him half dead. And the scripture said the priest came down that same road and saw the man and didn't want to be bothered. The oh, oh, my. Clergy. A Levite, which was a part, working with the priest. They might have just came back from serving somewhere in the church, in the synagogue, or whatever. Came down the same road. However, at least he walked over and looked at the man. <laughs> but he didn't help him. Here come this good Samaritan, the Bible calls him who had compassion. Just think for a moment. The injured man was Jewish. And the Jews and the Samaritans despised one another. Are you listening? It was a deep-seated prejudice towards one another. But this Samaritan laid all of that aside and he saw this man not to be a Jewish man but he saw this man as a human being wow. who needed help. Church, this man understood the, relation, the, the fact that relationships matter regardless of race or status yeah. in life. Here's a question for you to consider. Are you overlooking someone who God has sent into your life to be a dear friend or a father figure, a mentee, or even a potential spouse because of some deep-seated prejudice? They make too little money. They're not educated enough. They're overweight. You're white. They're black. And the list goes on. But let me say this. Don't allow, don't let your prejudice rob you 
of God's best for your life. Well, it brings me to my last point. Since today is Father's Day, let us look for a few moments at the fact that relationship matters with Father and his children. In Luke 15, it tells the story of the lost son, which many call the prodigal son, who basically wanted to be independent of his father. He went on, went to his father and said, put it in my own words, give me what's mine. And I'm sure that his father knew that he wasn't ready for that. I wonder how many times did he try to talk with him. However, our kids sometimes have to learn the hard way. People used to say bought sense is better than told. The father let him go. And I'm sure that his heart was broken. However, someone said, love only possesses what it releases. Love only possesses what it releases. Church, how often do we break the heart of God, our Father? When we turn our back on him and resist his authority and refuse his guidance. I want you to read this story sometime when you have a chance. Luke 15, at a later time. But it indicates to us that this son was having a ball, a good time. He was living large. He was partying. However, he ended up losing his wealth, losing his liberty, and losing his self-respect. Church sin will always keep you longer than you want to stay and take you further than you want to go. But thank God, he came to his senses and went back home asking for forgiveness. Now, I could stay there a little while. He didn't come back home blaming his daddy, blaming the folks, blaming everybody. Sometimes when we do wrong, we come back, we want to still start blaming everybody. That's right. That's right. That's right. But he just said, came back and asked for forgiveness. But I want you to notice verse 20 of Luke 15. It says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. As a little history, a Jewish father would never run. They wore long robes, and running was humiliating. But when he saw his son, the quorum was cast aside. He was overtaken by emotions. You know, I was taught that men were to be tough and strong and show no emotions except at games. (laughs) And for God's sake, don't cry. 
I can remember Brett brought it up in the, my neighborhood, the projects, and, and went to the recreation center, and the older guys used to take us young guys, and they would punch us at, on, our, on our shoulder, just hit us, just punch us. And oh, I, and they say, they're hurt, and I said, no, I don't hurt, and I'd be hurt, and as soon as they leave, I'd go around the corner and start crying. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to cry. That's what they were teaching me. Therefore, you didn't tell your son that you loved him. You didn't hug him. Thank God we've learned better today. That boys need to know that we are, that they are loved by their fathers. They need hugs from their fathers. And they need to know that it's all right to cry. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This father was overtaken by compassion and he ran to meet his son. Church, I can help to wonder how many times did this loving father look down that road praying for his son to return. Praying for his father, son, to return. Fathers, how many of us actually spend time praying for our children and our grandchildren? We have a tendency to leave that up to the, our spouse or the ladies, the grandmother. But men, we have to get to a place where we can stand in the gap in prayer for our family, for our community, for our city, for all things around us. We need men to commit themselves to prayer. I never could figure out why we'd have a prayer meeting and it'd be all ladies would be there, but the men would be home watching the game. We need men to pray. Church, let me rush to um, Church, we really, relationship matters. Prayer matters. Fathers matter. Statistics says, speaking of absentee fathers, that absentee fathers in the white community is 20%, 31% in the Hispanic community, and 57% in the African-American community. What all these statistics mean what, this, what I should say is what these statistics miss is that often the father are there in the home provi providing for their kids, but their kids have no daddy in their lives that spend time with them. Relationship matters, and they do. Then we as Christian fathers have a greater responsibility. We're not only responsible for our own home and families, but we should be moved with compassion to help our single parents without getting involved in an unhealthy way. In case you missed that, let me put it down where you can understand it. In other words, help the child without trying to seduce the mother. You got that, didn't you? We got it. We got it. <laughs> no, you can't take the father's place. But you can be a role model, a friend, a mentor. Because fathers matter. My father loved me. I know he did. But he wasn't the kind of man that would spend time with me. He never took me to a game. He was a hard-working man, but he loved the horses. And he had a gambling problem with those horses. I can remember, and I look back in my mind, that he won one time $300. And it was time that the horses had hay, and my mother and I didn't have food. And I sold clothes hangers and bottles. He was a hardworking man. 
but he didn't know how to show love. And maybe because the way he was brought up, he didn't know. They didn't know. It was later on in life when I was out of the house, per se, that his life changed for the good. He became a preacher. Relationships matters. My time is up, but let me just say this. I want every person to bow their head, but I want the men to bow their heads. Every man. I want, matter of fact, all the men stand up again as I get ready to close here because my time is up. In my preparation for this message, I ran across this prayer. And I said, I have to pray this prayer for all the men that's here for Father's Day. A prayer is called a prayer from an imperfect father for his three priceless sons. Men, bow your heads and let me say this prayer over you. I want you to hear the words. Make me the Father, O Lord, who will show my children the strength to face weakness, the courage to face fear, the grace to accept honest defeat, and the humility and gentleness to accept victory. Make me the Father who will show my children not a path of ease and comfort, but the ability to accept the challenge of stress and difficulty. Use me, I pray, to be an example of one who can stand up in the storm and dare learn compassion for those who fail. Make me, Father, make me the Father who will teach his children the value of a clear heart and a high goal. To look in the mirror of their own faults before they find fault in others. To learn to laugh, yet never forget how to cry. To reach into the future without ever forgetting the past. Make me the Father, O oh Lord, who will show my, son, my children enough of a sense of humor so they will always be serious, but never take themselves too seriously. Give them, give them humility. So that they will always remember the simplicity of true greatness, the open mind of true wisdom, the meekness of true strength. After all these things, and after all these things, Are there added for me, I pray, the wisdom to show them the dubious value of titles, position, money, and material gain, and the eternal value of prayer, the Holy Bible, a Christian home, and a saving relationship with your children, with your son, rather, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah.